With her startup Lactation Labs, physician founder Stephanie Canali is empowering moms with data about their breast milk. By making it quick and easy to test and get results, Canali and her team are helping moms make more informed decisions about whether and how long to breastfeed their children, decisions which have far-reaching global health and economic implications. I'm Logan Plaster, Editor-in-Chief at Startup Health, and this is a Health Innovation Update. Welcome to Startup Health TV. This is a health innovation update. I'm Logan Plaster, Editor-in-Chief at Startup Health, and I'm joined today by Stephanie Canali, a Dr. Stephanie Canali, the founder of Lactation Labs. Stephanie, so great to have you. Thank you for having me. So um, I'm excited to catch up with you, hear about the, the latest from Lactation Labs. My understanding is that your company is really making it possible and accessible for women to test their breast milk, understand the makeup of their, uh, of their breast milk. Uh, I saw it on your site. It's almost like a, a n- n- nutritional label for, for your breast milk. Um, why, is that, why is that so important right now? Well, I think now than ever. I mean, I started this company from my own personal experience coupled with my clinical years of practice. You know, I, we're, we're on a mission to take the guessing out of breastfeeding. More women understand now the health benefits. So up to 95% of women leaving hospitals are breastfeeding now more than ever, especially during COVID, um, especially when all this data came out that COVID is not um, secreted through breast milk and there's no trace of the virus. So with all the health benefits, there's more and more, um, you know, societal pressure. There's more and more medical pressure for people to breastfeed now more than ever. And we just want to take the guessing out of that equation because what we're trying to do is provide some information, information I wish I'd had, I wish, you know, my patients had had and, and, and really figure out that piece of the puzzle, which is um, basically how, how it works real quick. is like a mom sends in her sample, gets personalized recommendations on what she can do to her diet too, and supplements to take that can make her milk the best possible. And we're, we're trying to give her back that control, especially now at a time when there's so many things that are out of our control. So since I spoke to you last um, at the Startup Health Festival, we're actually noticing um, a surge in sales, which is great. Um, and I think it's because COVID, people can do this test from the comfort of their own home and doctors are are realizing wait a second there's a way we could check on these babies instead of just looking at input and output which is pee diapers poo diapers and trying to guess how much Mm. the infant's getting fed we actually have more data we can use so it's actually helping you know um fewer doctors visits to the offices and i think for a lot of new parents it's a little scary to do that too interesting so it's a an adjunct for a pediatrician now and not just for a parent who's curious or wanting to improve the nutrients. It's a way to bring some peace of mind to their physician. Absolutely. And what we've also just launched to, and we're excited to talk about is our telehealth services, because we just got so much more demand for more information and that personal connection with, you know, what can I do? What should I be eating? What, you know, what is best for myself, my baby, my family. Mm -hmm. And so we just launched those. So we're really excited about that. Uh, talk to me about that that transition, that pivot during COVID. Uh, w- was there a moment or a story or an individual that you recall that sort of represented like the need, this this shifting need? Yeah, actually, we had a really. Um... There was actually a mother who herself, she herself is um, an EMT paramedic and her husband, I believe was a firefighter. And so she had tested over time and I got this email from her saying like, thank you so much for your test. This has been what I needed to continue with my breastfeeding journey because I, in the, in the, you know, at the bottom of my heart, I knew this is what was right for my child, but my child was struggling to gain weight. And I was just so impressed that someone working 24 hour shifts, two frontline workers, not one, but two. Right. And, you know, and during COVID of all times, I mean, most, most parents be like, okay, I'm done. This is just too hard. And especially if their child's not gaining weight, that's really, really stressful. And then her mission to just really kind of continue on with it. And then what we did is we provided that piece of, of the puzzle that was missing for her. We gave her the data and information that reassured her that she was on the right path changing her diet. It was amazing to see how her milk changed. So she actually had pretty low, um, 
caloric value of her milk initially and her child wasn't gaining very much. And we were like, okay, you got to eat this, eat this, eat this, drink this, you know, we gave her very, very specific things to do. And so what really struck me as, you know, as meaningful, it really, it really hit home with me because just, I mean, I just couldn't imagine being a frontline worker right now with a newborn. And when she had her baby, it was right at the beginning of COVID when it hit here and people really weren't sure if, you know, how transmissible it was and it, pregnancy delivery, all those concerns. So it was really, um, it really was an, an inspiring story, I guess, to say the least. Yeah. But I also had a lot of admiration for her because I probably would have given up. And then to just see how we gave her that control back. And, yeah, that extra and information, really was, yeah, that extra information is what she needed to keep going in that in that moment so you mentioned the the idea of having a low caloric count and then you give like nutritional uh advice what are some of the other kind of practical ways that you're able to help a a mother based off of the data that they receive yeah well i think a lot of moms so what's what's surprising is it's still 50 percent of moms um stop breastfeeding just because they think their milk isn't good enough mm. and there's no tool to know otherwise there's no tool. So f I think it works both ways. I mean, we're not a company that's based on breastfeed or die. We're all about feed your child. It's not an option. Um, and it's interesting because for some women, you know, they're so adamant. There's so much pressure. They have it in their head that they are going to do this no matter what. We help them along that journey if they really want to do that. Vice versa, for some that really need to supplement or they're being told to supplement or their doctors are like, you've got to do something here because your child's not gaining enough, then we also, you know, it's not what we set out to do, but on the back end, what we're also finding is that we're giving those moms the validation they needed to be like, you know what? I'm going to supplement. I'm still a great mom. It's okay because mm. I have data in front of me to show me why. Mm. And so again, taking the guessing out of this, I mean, it's amazing to me still how little information, little research there is for new moms and women's health, especially during the postpartum phase. Help me understand and the viewers understand just the scope of this challenge. You're the only, if, if not one of the very few companies doing work like this, uh, offering milk analysis, um, and you're still at the beginning of your of your journey. Um, how big how big of a challenge is this? How many women could be impacted by this? Kind of think globally. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, in the United, what's surprising is the global health considerations to breastfeeding and the cost of not breastfeeding. And I say it like that because there was a huge um, article uh, published in public health journals saying that the global health to not breastfeeding is in the hundreds of millions, if not, uh, sorry, in the hundreds of billions of dollars, mm. because there are so many health benefits to breast milk. So, you know, kids get sick less, moms get sick less, moms are less likely to have ovarian cancer, breast cancer, diabetes, kids actually have a higher IQ, less infections, fewer healthcare claims. But we also know there's an environmental impact to breastfeeding. There, you know, there's, there are so many other factors that go on. Parents who, have, who are working and um, their child is breastfed, it, it's pretty evident they get sick less. So they're missing work less often. Mm. They're less, you know, there's less absenteeism. There's more presenteeism at work and so forth. So there's a lot of, a lot of push, a lot of economic drive behind we, you know, we should try to get moms to breastfeed as much as possible. In the United States alone, for every 5% increase in women who breastfeed it is a directly a $400 million savings. Wow. Um, that's a number you can hang your hat on. Uh, have you started to get a sense of how much offering this, offering moms this kind of data in analysis, how much that actually changes uh, their willingness to keep breastfeeding? Yeah, I apologize for the helicopter overhead. Um, but, uh, so testing milk has actually shown to, and it's not just our data, but there's data and literature to show that testing milk can prolong breastfeeding rates by on average one to two months. And it, the insight that moms have decreases their anxiety. Mm. We actually did a study, it's not yet published, but not, surprisingly, not surprising results that moms who could not produce a lot of milk actually had very high anxiety and depression scores. And so there's this whole psychology that happens there too, um, between milk production, stress, and so forth. But testing milk is shown to prolong breastfeeding rates. And I think in 
and what we've seen actually during COVID is an increase in demand for that because people want to know mm. and they, they, they want to be able to have very tangible things that they can, you know, that they can set out to do and also know, do they need these supplements or not? I mean, some of these supplements that people take cost hundreds of dollars a month yeah. Yeah. and do they really need these? Yes or no. Yeah. So, that makes perfect sense. Doing. Um, talk to me about how to, how to scale a product like this. You just mentioned working with, uh, pediatricians, uh, you go direct to consumer. I know you sell the kits directly to, to parents. And, and I know you've also, uh, worked with or considered working with payers, maybe even employers. What's kind of the, the strategy for, for scaling this? Well, right now we're focusing on direct to consumer we're, because we're like, that's what we're passionate about that because we can also help those moms. I think uh, scaling wise though, we're talking to more employers because we're able to show that for every $1 spent, they get $3 back on any type of lactation support. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing, you know, this is sort of an employee retention tool. We're lucky to be in LA with a lot of tech companies. There's a lot of competition for talent and, and, you know, it's, it's scary. It's, it's honestly a disturbing statistic mm -hmm. to see that almost 40% of women the latest I read was 43% of women will leave the workforce in their first year just because they're not supported mm -hmm. and they're trying to choose between, you know, being a mom and their career. And I just hope that all of that ends quickly. And so any tool we can have to help moms either, you know, be healthier at home, at work, be less stressed about whatever it may be that they're stressed about, I think we need to focus on that. And so employers are getting interested in our, um, in our offerings as well. Payers, I think down the line, I mean, I've, I've, um, I realize that's a whole other, <laughs> whole other, you know, can of worms there, but we're, we're starting our conversations with payers and it's, yeah. it's, it's clear that you're, you're building that case economically, which is obviously kind of where they start <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in those conversations of really understanding the, um, the cost structures around this. Uh, it seems like in many ways you're, you're carving some new territory, uh, which, is, which is exciting, but I know that that's hard, hard work as well. Um, you mentioned but we didn't get into the kind of the nuts and bolts of the telehealth uh, uh, option that you, you rolled out. When did you launch that again? We just launched it a week ago and oh, wow. um, we're really excited to provide because it, it's funny how we're, we're in a breast milk testing, you know, we're one of two companies in the world that are doing it, the only company in North America. And so it's a new market, new education, all this stuff, but we're going old school when it comes to telehealth because what we found is people want relationships, people want relatability, people want to have, you know, a, a, a personal relationship and, and also re realize what's right for them as opposed to, oh, the guidelines say this, oh, you're breastfeeding. Well, the CDC says avoid these three kinds of fish. Well, it's recommended you take this supplement, but what does that person in particular really need? Mm -hmm. And so we're finding that they're again, like where medicine is going in a very personalized fashion, but yet old school in terms of the way that, you know, I, as a family doctor, people want family medicine. They want someone who knows their whole family, the story and who can grow with them. Yeah. It sounds like, it sounds kind of like you're taking that idea of the uh, lactation nurse consultant that you meet with as a mom and kind of taking it to the, you know, to 2020. You're allowing them to, to link up with someone more personally to understand their story, right? That, and we also do have lactation consultants on board too. We have registered dietitians on board, and we also have a functional medicine doctor because we've also found that, you know, functional medicine is delving a little bit more into the deep seated causes of issues that are, um, that are going on. So they'll do some more extensive lab tests and so forth. And we're finding that people want this holistic approach. Mm. Some people want just Western medicine, some people are just more into, you know, alternative medicines, some are complementary, but a lot of people want a little bit of everything. They want the lactation support who can help with, you know, uh, flange fitting and uh, latch issues, which I'm not an expert in. I'm just, I just know what's in the milk and how we can change that. And then they want some practical advice too. And then you know, of course, if some people are really into meal plans and they want to know exactly what they should be eating from a dietitian, some people have no interest in talking to a dietitian. So we want to have all these services here to support moms. Um, so it can be kind of their one-stop shopping. And, and again, just we're trying to reiterate, we're taking the guessing out of us. That's Any awesome. 
Do you feel like uh, post COVID, do you feel like this period of time um, fundamentally changed how, how people view uh, pregnancy and early childhood in terms of how they interact with physicians and data? I mean, I think so too. And definitely as a physician, I think it's, it's, um, it's kind of sad that it took a global pandemic for this to change because none of, you know, it, I was at a, I was at a large academic center and uh, none of us were doing telehealth because it was not reimbursed. Mm. And so, you know, I mean, if you think about it, why would you spend, you know, 10 minutes, you're going to spend that 10 minutes on the phone with the patient anyhow, but like to go through all that documentation for maybe a couple of dollars, it didn't make any sense to do that. Yeah. So I think the fact that people are realizing <laughs> and coming up to speed with technology that you do not need to be in person for so many things that you can do. And um, I think that, that I think healthcare in general is just going to, you know, it has changed and is going to change and be different forever. Hmm. And I think early childhood care and, and newborn care can change as well. I mean, my, the kiddos I used to take care of, if they were not, if they were not gaining weight quickly enough, they were in my office once a week um, to do weight checks. We don't need them to come into the office anymore. You know what I mean? There's other tools we can use so that parents aren't forced to leave their house and, you know, with kids and newborns, especially that can sometimes be an ordeal in and of itself. And it's not like, you know, during COVID, you really want to be in the doctor's office every week, either with a newborn. Sure. So I think that's really forced us to think about like, what really is important? Who needs to be in our offices in person? And who can we help with just a video chat or phone call? Yeah, totally. Um, what are you most excited about? This is the last question for lactation labs, closing out 2020, coming to 20, uh, 2021 next phase of the business, uh, what gets you most excited? What gets me most excited and keeps me up at night, in a good way, <laughs> is thinking how we're expanding to women's health. You know, we're offering preconception counseling and telehealth services through pregnancy, through lactation, through mom being back at work. And it really, for me, is just such a natural passionate way that I've spent the last 15 years of practice is just women's health and mommyhood are just my my favorite areas so we're really excited about being on this journey with with women that's awesome well Stephanie thank you for the work that you're doing thanks for taking a few minutes to to get us up to speed uh, love to see how you're empowering women with with knowledge or with this data and um, and there's just so many ways this can expand and affect even more women globally. So thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for having me.